Hey everyone, I'm Stefan Evans and you're listening to Talking About Tracy Chapman, the brand new Tracy Chapman fan podcast. Every week we'll be talking to a celebrity, a musician or a member of the press about Tracy Chapman's career, legacy and music. This is episode one. I hope you enjoy. So today we have um, Matt Mahurin and he is a videographer and photographer with a focus on political and social commentary. Um, Today we're speaking to Matt about his... Um, photography for Tracy Chapman's debut album as well as the videography for the Fast Car music video. How are you doing, Matt? I'm doing good. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. This is, it's fun to go back and revisit that amazing time with Tracy. It's just one of the highlights of my... I've been doing music videos and photography and music for, geez, 30, 35 years, and it's really one of the um, you know real special experiences I had. So that was 31 years ago, um, if you can believe that. Um, what what are your memories from the from the actual session? Well, what happened was is I you know I did my work had a kind of moodiness to it, and um, a record company um, had called and asked for my portfolio, and I sent the portfolio up, and then it just came returned with no uh, information. And sometimes you know people think that my work's a little uh, dark or moody, so I I called them back and said. Um, you know, what happened? They said, oh, we thought your work was just a little bit dark and moody. <laughs> and I said, I said, well, you know, I, I always hear that, you know, and I said, um, why don't you just have her come down? I said, we have this new artist. And why don't you just have her come down to your studio? And I said, just have her come down and, you know, um, you know, let me photograph her for 15 minutes or something. And if you don't uh, like what I do, you, uh, you can give me 10 bucks for the film. And, um, they could kind of an offer they couldn't refuse, I guess, because yeah. I still remember um, being in my uh, Greenwich Village studio and Tracy walking in, and she was very, um, very shy and um, absolutely gorgeous, just beautiful. I just remember her. You could tell she was like strong, physically strong, um, but she was very shy. So she just handed me this little cassette, and um, I went over and I put this cassette in my um, stereo, and I listened to like the first like probably forty five seconds or whatever minute of a fast car, and I was just like, I'm sure you gonna, I'm sure you're hearing this every day now, but I said you're gonna be like huge. This is like unbelievable, you know, and. Um, so then I just, I don't have any assistance or any big scene or anything. There's no big to do. There's no hair and makeup people. There's no stylist, none of that people running around, no big fuss. And she just sat on a stool and I um, just had like a light on her and I just shot, um, uh, you know, a couple rolls of film and then I went off and I have this process where I kind of take the photograph and then I kind of paint back into it and re-photograph it to kind of give it mood. And then I, uh, sent it in with my fingers crossed and, um, they ended up loving it and it ended up becoming um you know the cover for her album and uh, so it's just an uh, amazing experience like if i wouldn't have made that call if i would have not you know said oh you know give me a chance you know taking that chance for any young artist or photographer or, or person out there you know just yeah. say, hey you know i'm willing to do it for free if it doesn't work you know i just you know even though i was you know pretty established in the business and all that stuff it's like you're never too uh, well known or too successful or too uh, you know, fool yourself that you can't be able to kind of kind of sense those opportunities. You know, when you uh, when you need, to, you always got to kind of almost act like every day is your first day in the business, and that I help, that's helped me a lot. Seeing I've been, been doing this for almost forty years now. Yeah, amazing. That's that's such a brilliant story. And so, forty five seconds is all you had heard from the music. Um, how did the yeah. music impact the way you shot the the, fo- the photos? Well, it was just I was just responding to her. She just had a kind of a quiet strength to me, you know, whether it was shyness or um, just power and uh, whatever. But she just, just her, just, um, just, she just, you know, such a solid person physically. Just like she could just tell how strong she was, you know, and she just beautiful skin and and this beautiful, quiet but very strong kind of speaking voice. And there was this kind of wonderful give and take between her kind of shyness and this you know this kind of physical power and of her voice and just her physical presence and then you can see it on stage and then later on I went to uh, um, the first time I I think it was this is after I'd done the video for her and I remember going to uh, see her perform at the Beacon and she, okay. she got up there and I've you know I've seen many many live shows in my life and there's the three most powerful performance people I've seen on stage are um Bono, Tom Waits, and Tracy Chapman. 
and the way that she was the opening act for the 10,000 Maniacs, and um, in the lobby, people were like crying in the lobby. They're like, I saw a couple of people that's like, they were like moved to tears because they didn't know who this person was. You know, it's like, oh, she was unknown to half the audience, or maybe even more, and she came out and just was just incredible. You know, person, and and uh, you know, in terms of her presence on stage, and it was just very she was very within herself as yeah. opposed to uh you know a bono who was like this kind of master showman and then tom who was this incredible you know tom is like a, i worked with tom for 30 years um I, I have a kind of big book coming out actually this month 240 page book based on my 30 year collaboration with some of just photographs and illustrations and, but anyway tom is like a combination between like kind of a ape and a ballerina on stage and then yeah. tracy had this kind of very internal reserved uh, power that just filled up the whole, um, you know, theater. It was just extraordinary. And um, so anyway, so that was my, you know, that was just my first performance, you know, seeing her perform live, which is incredible. Oh, so was this before or after the, so this is after you took the photo? It was, this was after. Yeah. I think this was after because I didn't know who she was before or somewhere in the process of one of these things because I'd done the album for her and then I've done um, three other videos for two or three, yeah, three videos for I think over the years. So anyway, yeah, that, so that was just incredible experience. Perfect. You mentioned um, Tom Waits there and, and Bono from U2. You've also worked with um, Bonnie Ray, um, Joni Mitchell, Peter Gabriel. Like these people all have an element of social commentary running through their work and they are rock folk to give it a loose term. Is that something you look for or is that just something that's happened almost coincidentally? Well, I think it's not coincidentally, I would say more organically in a way, because my background, I was not a, I didn't never study photography or filmmaking. I was an uh, illustrator and I want to do social political illustrations. And so that's how I began my career was doing drawings every Sunday for the Los Angeles Times, political drawings. And then I ended up going to New York and doing um, probably 40 Time Magazine covers on everything from terrorism to all kinds of war, fear of war, um, social, you know, uh, social abuse, you know, uh, domestic abuse. Yeah. So I ended up doing a lot of that. So my, my whole career in the first, you know, five or six years of my career before I even started doing any music videos was doing social political illustrations. And uh, you people I know kind of a little bit on the more kind of, uh, maybe for lack of a better term, the kind of darker side of things in terms of humanity, but also within that, within that darkness, there's a tremendous uh, sense of humanity and hope, which all these people have, um, yeah. but they also are not afraid of kind of going to those, you know, more, um, you know, those, the shadow, the shadow parts of life and, 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 you know, ourselves. And as artists, they, I think they go a lot to that, but through the shadow, I think they really, uh, that's how I think that's what draws a lot of their audience because we all have that kind of shadow side that's, you know, sometimes maybe the hope is a little bit, um, you know, uh, lost in the shadows. But these people, through the kind of beauty of their music, kind of bring it into the light a little bit and make it a little more, um, you know, um, makes it more of a, there's, creates more of a community that we all have that. And I think they kind of bring people together in that way. And I've just, plus uh, all these people are musicians of very high, not only high quality of the music they make, but high integrity as, as people from my experiences in terms of working with them yeah absolutely i think tracy refers to herself as a hopeful cynic which i think kind of yes. des <laughs> describes that um yes. that quite well um how do you feel about 20 million people or 20 million copies of your photograph being in people's homes and um record collections across the world well you know that's a very interesting and good question because you know i'm i'm quite anonymous you could be sitting next to me in a restaurant and would have no idea who I was or what I'd done or anything but if I walked down the street with like the Tracy Chapman album cover and maybe I did the the album cover for um one of the album covers for Metallica for the St. Anger and I've done you know Time Magazine covers and Rolling Stone covers of Marilyn Manson and Jay-Z yeah. so if I walked down and if I put a little outfit on that had colors of all the you know pictures of all the things I'd done I couldn't walk one block anywhere in the world without somebody saying, oh, I have that record album or I read that article or I remember that picture or I saw that video um, or I read that Time Magazine article. So it's a strange kind of anonymity in one way, but another way, the work is pervasive. You know, I mean, I did this video for this band Disturbed and I did a cover of uh, Simon and Garfunkel's Sound of Silence and I just shot the video up at my house 
I live up in Topanga Canyon, up in the mountains um, near like California, near Los Angeles. Okay. And the band came up. My wife's a great cook. She made lunch. The guy we shot the performance in the uh, in our you know in our spare room, and the video has over half a billion views. And so you can, you know, that's what's so amazing about this job is that you get to wow. and if you collaborate with artists that you know have you know just incredible quality just musically and then you know the philosophy the message behind the music um then it adds this other deeper value and then you get to be a kind of participant because these people are very much rooted in ideas and concepts and a mission and if you can be a part of that that's incredible um you know a couple years ago i did a 10 minute short film with bono about liner notes and i got to collaborate with them creatively and somebody who would just you know used to sit alone in my room listening to uh you know elton john or the beatles yeah or Joni mitchell and here i am like at Joni Mitchell's house, you know, I'm in her, you know, hot tub with her, um, <laughs> filming her for a video, or I'm, you know, Tom Waits, I'm having pizza with Tom Waits, or I'm smoking a cigar with Lou Reed, or I'm, you know, driving in Bono's um, convertible, uh, you know, up the coast of Ireland, you know, so Incredible. it's like, how did I get here, you know, and, um, and even when I feel kind of like, you know, struggling with my own kind of journey or whatever, I think, well, if these people work with me, I, you know, uh, you know, I've had some pretty good days along the way, you know? um Amazing. And you get all of the um, experiences without any of the hassle of being famous in the traditional celebrity sense, I guess. Yeah, that's true. But then the thing is, is that what, one of the great challenges, though, is that, you know, I have my, uh, you know, my insecurities and my, uh, you know, all those kinds of things like everybody does. Um, but when you're having to work with these people, there's no room for that. You know, and yeah. so if you if one of these people who are you know geniuses or, you know, they're either incredibly talented, incredibly famous, incredibly rich or all of the above. And then they have an idea or they have a performance that's not working or it's not right. And you have to kind of summon the energy to go in and say, hey, this isn't working. Or they present you with a concept and you really have, it's your job to be able to um, speak up and say, you know, I don't believe this is working. And there's been a couple times when I've had to do that with, you know, some of the biggest artists in the world. And I swear, I feel like the whole room starts spinning yeah. when I say it because, you know, because, uh, you know, these pe people, I've still been doing this all these years and I still am a bit starstruck by them. I mean, these people are, yes, they're just regular people like everybody in a certain way, but they're not really. I mean, these people are amongst the most talented, hardworking, um, you know, kind of ambitious um, purposeful people on the planet and to be able to kind of have to collaborate with them and have to bring my, to attempt to bring my, my art and the way yeah. that I see things up to their level so that, you know, that I can support or collaborate with them because once I do a video or a photograph, they're in my world. You know, that's my, so I, the way I look at it is my videos, they're supplying the soundtrack for my little short film because I have to look at that way to empower myself to kind of try and, um, you know, compete with the, uh, just the power and the, the reputation, the mystique, the whatever, you know, the fame of these people, you know, the quality of their work. Absolutely. I can gather, only imagine the pressure that you must feel, but ultimately your work speaks for itself. Let me tell you about how I came to get in contact. I was watching a vintage episode of Top of the Pops the other day. Fast Car was playing and underneath the video read... Fast Car video director Matt Mahurin filmed Tracy Chapman in his apartment, and I quote, I want it to be as simple as possible. I put a camera on eight feet of Dolly and went back and forth for several takes. I projected some photographs on the wall to add different textures. Could you tell us a bit more about that experience? Well, this is after the album cover because it kind of came out of that, and I think, you know, a lot of times with artists, you know, they when they're just starting out the business, if they find somebody they're comfortable with, uh, you know, then they want to bring them into another area. And um, I, the, uh, the video production person at her label um, had known my work, and so it kind of just all worked out naturally. They wanted to kind of keep a cohesive look, in a way, stylistically and kind of, you know, mood-wise and just palette and all that stuff. So basically it was a very, I work very simply. I'm my own um, camera operator and um, editor, so I kind of, I, I'm, since my background as a painter, I always want to have as much control as possible, although my crews, you know, the people that support me and work with me are just amazing, and lots of the stuff I've done, I could have never done it without them. Um, but in like her case, it was a very simple process because I just didn't want to, um, you know, I wanted to make it as easy and kind of painless as possible for her. So basically we shot at just a small sound stage. It wasn't in my home, but it was a small studio. And basically I went and took a bunch of, uh, photographs of just textures as you say and just projected them up on the wall and then just set her on the 
on a stool and um, just put a little bit of dolly track, just, you know, eight or 10 feet of dolly track and yep. just um, got on the dolly track and just, just kind of went back and forth. And when you shoot videos, you do this thing called playback where you, you get the, the master, you know, edit of the song, which you're going to cut the video to and you play that and then you, and you film that so you can sync the footage you're shooting up with the actual, you know, master recording that's out on the album. And then the job of the, uh, artist is to be able to lip sync and play along and one of the things that I was always important for me was um, making sure that when people lip sync some people they're either self-conscious or they don't want they don't they actually move their mouth but they don't sing when they when they um, do the, the playback so she started singing and her voice was so incredible I was only about three feet away from her three or four feet away from her and um, her voice was so incredible and I must admit I just wanted to hear her voice so I kept the playback is quite quite loud so I kept getting them to lower the playback more and more and more I would sit, tell my assistant director just keep knocking the because I was I wanted to hear her um, her voice you know to be able yeah. to be that close to it was like being I don't know close to I don't know what to like this, this um, you know a, a jewel or something some shining you know rare jewel or something just to be in the proximity of, to be able to kind of get in that kind of uh and I've had the good fortune to be, whether it's James Hetfield from Metallica or Joni Mitchell or Bono or whoever, I've been able to be right in their face with the camera, and it's been one of the great gifts of my, uh, you know, of my career. And so we just, you know, had her sing the song a few times, and that was it. She was, you know, and it was just wonderful. And, and then I went out and just took a drive, uh, just rented a car for a weekend, and me and a buddy just hopped in the car, and we went around and just drove around and shot some just stuff, and I walked around, um, uh, I walked around in New York and just shot, um, you know, some, um, like there's a, a gentleman holding like a, a, a bottle that's kind of swaying back and forth. That was a homeless gentleman outside of a uh, shelter. Yeah. And then some of the stuff, and so some of the cars, and the, those kinds of things were all just, you know, atmospheric. The, the thing that I can really say about working, when, it, when you work with people like this that are really kind of geniuses, you know, with what they do, they're like the best, at what they do, um, your job, um, the most important part of your job is to kind of stay out of their way. And, and um, what I mean by that is not, it doesn't mean you do nothing, but what you, your job is to um, support their authenticity, to just be able to protect, you have to be able, your job is to be able to protect their authenticity and be able to um, take what's the reality and the, 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 the genius and the, the talent and the, the kind of musical magic that's in front of you and you have to be able to just make it through the technical process of, um, you know, lighting it and filming it and then, you know, color correcting it and then editing it and then syncing it up. And then yeah. the few images that you surround it with, your job is just to make sure that you don't F it up, you know, you don't <laughs> mess it up. And that, be and that, that, but that, that takes a, a very particular kind of skill in itself, I've had other videos where I could have taken, I could have taken, I've shot performances of artists and I, I could have cut together a performance uh, that could have ruined their career in terms of, you know, um, you, sometimes you really have to, the person's either not comfortable or they're not into the scene or they're a terrible lip syncer and you have to really, um, pull, you know, really pull like a little mini uh, miracle to kind of, um, uh, or they're having a bad day or they're hungover or they're just in a shitty mood and they're giving you <laughs> crap all, you know. And so you have to, be very malleable to that but then when somebody comes in who's just this pure um incredible uh you know kind of creative spirit you just gotta help that get that spirit out into the world and, uh, and then every once in a while through the course of a career one has a few um moments that end up kind of transcending your own work and you become just part of a moment and yeah. that's really what it was with tracy was just being able to just you know protect you know, her authenticity and, you know, and she was just starting out. So that was a tricky thing. And the really most important thing for me was to make her feel um, comfortable. Yeah. Um, am I right in thinking that um, the Baby Can I Hold You um, artwork is was you too? No, I don't think I did. Was it a, uh, was it a, a, an album cover? It was a single cover. It's very similar to um, the the album cover in the styling it's blue um potentially i don't know i'd have to see you know they, they, what happens is you know a lot of times you'll do images and you'll turn a few in and then they'll go off and do like single cover and lp 
things and they'll do, you know, you, so I have to see the image and there's, over the years I've had my images taken and, and somebody sent something to me and said, oh, did you, you know, I, I, I really enjoyed this piece you did and, and I never saw it printed because I sent it in the record company and then, you know, I don't get every single copy of every single version of the stuff that they do, so I'd have to, to see that to uh, know what it is. Do you know what, I'll send you an email with the um, image in later because it, it might just be good for your um, for your recollection just to, to revisit that point. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I'd like to see it. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's me. Um, another question which I think is interesting, you were saying you had originally got knocked back because a lot of your stuff was quite dark and moody. Um, um, on the flip side of the linear notes, um, there's actually a smiling version of the, the cover, which I think is is interesting that they were, they chose the one which looked somber in the end anyway. Um Oh, to use that one for the cover and then the smile one on the back? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I think that was, a, you know, and she has, a, she, and that's the thing, is she's very shy, and she, just, she and even her her smile is powerful, but her smile is still shy. There's this kind of, you know, um, you know, you just meet some of these artists that are just really out there, you know, they just, they're just like, some, like I said, like somebody like Bono, and to his credit, I mean, the guy is just, I mean, I always... I always joke that there's there's only one job title in the world for for the Bono job, and the right guy got it. Yeah, you know? absolutely. <laughs> really, you know, you know, he's really just unbelievable. And then, um, whereas somebody like Tom Waits, he just it's him, it's all him as a creative, uh, you know, brilliant performer. But he's really taking on this role. And then you have somebody like Tracy, who is just you know protecting herself and her art, and kind of putting it out into the putting it out into the world, you know, and like I said, that's just, it's amazing to be able to um, collaborate with these people and just try and keep up with them and, and match them with what I do, you know, and and also there's, I really prided myself on long relationships, people I work with, I did, you, did, you know, a few videos with Tracy and um, and then like I said, I just did a thing with, you know, you two in the last, you know, last couple of years, so I worked with yeah. them since I was, I'm 60 years old now and the first thing I did with them, I think I was 26 or 27 years oh, old, wow. so we kind of we've kind of grown up together in our respective fields and we've, you know, come together that's incredible. quite often, you know, and, and that's just amazing, you know, experience and really feel so fortunate. I mean, I, I earned it with hard work and stuff, but, you know, you, you still, there's no guarantee. So you, it's really to try and protect those relationships uh, by consistently, um, you know, for any young artist or young creative professional, that's the thing, that's how you get more work is just based on the last, job you did you know and uh and if you can build trust with these people is and respect you know and you really protect the relationship and you're discreet and all those things and you're honest that you really can um work out for like you know really long amazing experiences because i never knew that i would be able ever become friends with some of these people you know as it blew, blows my mind absolutely i think um that's great advice for anyone listening um who is trying to get into that industry um one thing I did want to ask is, are you aware of this online craze of people using the vinyl cover um, and taking selfies with it so that they are in situ of the of the photo? So they do what? So, okay, okay. So they put the vinyl over their face and because you get the head and shoulders in, um, the... <laughs> They pose with the the vinyl in various ways. So they're they're doing things. They're holding flowers. They may be eating their lunch. Um, it's a huge thing online. <laughs> there's there's lots. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. Um, again, no, I, w- I, w- I wasn't I wasn't aware of that. No. Again, I need to send you some things after the, <laughs> after this recording. I think. Oh, that's so well. Thank you. Thank you for telling me that. You know, because uh, you know when I first the first the first um job I ever did, the first big job I did was Time Magazine cover on, um, you know, domestic abuse, people that had been abused in relationships, um, and two weeks after I um, did the illustration, I got a big envelope with a bunch of smaller envelopes from people from all over the country um, writing about how the artwork had helped empower them to face some of their pain or their struggles or whatever, and just, just beautiful, amazing, um, very humbling but also very empowering experience. Um, so I really end up replacing the, uh, the word uh, creating, which is what I do professionally. I'm a professional creating machine. Yeah. Um, but I re- really kind of in my mind, I replace the word creating with the word sharing, which is really what it is. Because I realized I'd sent this 
these artwork out into the world on the cover of this magazine, and it had come back to me through these letters, and that validated me. You know, that was I was 23 years old, 24 years old when I did that. And that validated the trajectory of my career for the last, you know, 35 years. And um, I think that the story you're telling me here, um, you know, that's a, just a wonderful, you know, smaller little, sweet little, uh, you know, uh, detail to that. Oh, there are thousands uh, to be a of part them. Of that. You know, to be a part of that, to be able to, you know, to be able to be a part of helping, you know, to keep the, you know, community, you know, to be able to uh, support the community of, around such a, you know, an amazing beloved artist. Yeah. Um, so speaking of community, um, that we're going to be publishing these um, podcasts onto Tracy Chapman um, online, which is a um, fan site we have. I think just under a million um, fans. And it would be oh, great. It would be great if you could tell us um, the name of that book that you've got coming out, so that if anyone wants to go and um, look you up or um, check out a bit more um, of your work, um, where can they do that and where can they find you? Oh well, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. It's very generous of you. Um, well, you can see a bunch of my other work just on um, Matt Mahern. Dot com, but I have this book coming out um, at the end of October of 2019, and it's called Tom Waits by Matt Mahurin. And basically, it was I was um, going through all my negatives from the album covers I'd done for Tom and the Rolling Stone portraits, and there were all these negatives and images that were pretty much going to be destined to darkness and decay. And it was not only did it kind of bum me out, it pissed me off. <laughs> and, um, so I decided that maybe I could use these images as a jumping off point to kind of explore all these different kinds of things that I do because I, I do drawing, I do painting, I do digital work, I do videos, I do sculpture, um, I build things. So I thought, I called Tom and said, hey Tom, could I make a book um, based on all these images that just use you as kind of more muse than musician? And he said, sure, go ahead. So I'd on and off for the next several years, I would just kind of do these pieces and it's, it kind of evolved in this kind of 240 page uh, book um, kind of and for anybody who's a young illustrator or photographer aside from a music fan um, it's an opportunity to kind of see just an incredibly wide range of uh, uh, what happens when you have different tools in the same hand you know whether it's a paintbrush or a camera or a computer um, so I, hopefully there's some visual inspiration creative inspiration for people that you know kind of do what I do or want to do what I do yeah um again really um useful advice and i'm definitely going to check that out two questions before we finish um question one do you have a favorite tracy chapman track outside of fast car you could say fast car if no, you... i think you know that just because of what that meant to me in my life at that time i would have to say that's probably um you know that's probably it i mean i could be in a driving in the car or be in a you know a drugstore a grocery store and that song will come on or you know, so that's really kind of, that's where my, my heart is in that song, I think, from that experience, you know. Absolutely. And finally, did you get paid more than 10 bucks? Did I what? <laughs> did you get paid more than that 10, uh, $10? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, I did. I did, <laughs> I did get paid. I did get paid more than that. But I think the real value, and I, I'm, I don't mean to be, you know, corny or sentimental or anything because um, I I love making a um, you know a, a good living doing what I do you know I mean I feel very um, blessed to be able to do that but the, really the bottom line is to be able to have you know the reason I make art is so that I can have experiences and to be able to travel around with these you know be on tour with you too or being you know uh, alone with Tracy Chapman in a little studio or you know yeah all these things I mentioned, these places I've been, um, yeah. that it's, everything's about the making of the thing. That's what I really care about. The finished product is wonderful to see the video or the photograph and, and to have people say that they're happy with it and to be able to make a living doing it is wonderful. But the thing that I you know, cherish the most and value the most and seek the most is um, a fulfilling experience in the making of the thing. Absolutely. Okay. Well, that it was an absolute pleasure um, speaking to you today. Thank you for joining us. All right. Well, thank you. Have a great day. And thanks for thinking of me. I really appreciate it. No worries. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to episode one of Talking About Tracy Chapman. Head over to our social channels, Tracy Chapman Online, for a chance to win a vinyl signed by Tracy herself. 